Hello students and welcome back to Shigyan Manji Vidyapeet. Students, we are learning the subject of English for Standard 10 in which we have started with uh, chapter number 1. This is the fourth lecture for chapter 1 taken from the book First Flight. There are two books. One is First Flight which is the main book and Footprints Without Feet that is the supplementary reader. We are taking the chapter number one from first flight. This is the fourth lecture for chapter one. Name of the chapter is A Letter to God and it's written by the author G.L. Funtis. Let's take a quick, recap, a quick recap of what we have learned so far. In the beginning of the chapter, we find the description of the place where a farmer is living he is living in a valley on top of a small hill. The small hill is inside the valley. Valley is a place which is at the bottom of two or more mountains. It's a flat land in between with usually a river flowing through it. Uh, his is the only family living in that entire valley and out of the stretch of land available in front of him, he has cowed out a beautiful big large field where he is growing crop. So, he has his house on top of the hill and right now he is looking at his crops standing in front of the house. He can see his entire field, he can see the river and he can see the mountains that are rising on both sides and a clear sky and he is constantly looking towards the north direction from usually the clouds come at this particular time of the year. Now, why is he waiting for the clouds? Because the plants are fully grown and now the plants have given out flowers. We know once the flowers are there, the flowers will stu uh, soon turn into fruit. That is, the maize will be ready. But now it's the flowering time of the plants and flowers are ready. Whole of the field you can see dotted with flowers. But the problem is the soil has gone dry. Usually at this time of the month or this time of the season, the soil, because the plants absorb most of the moisture from the soil and the sun rays evaporate it, uh, the rest of the moisture. So it is the right time for one rain at least, one downpour or one small shower of rain which will wet the earth, which will wet the soil and the plants will have enough water so that the flower turns into fruit that is the maize and he can take his crop, harvest his crop. This is the right time that the plants they need water and the farmer also is desperate. He continuously keeps on looking towards the direction from where the clouds usually come and he predicts that today, most probably by evening or night, he should get the rains and he's worried because in time if he doesn't get the rain, his plants will lack the water and perhaps he might not get a good harvest. When whole of the family sits for dinner, at that time big drops starts falling on the roof and they come to know that rain is going to come. and the children, they leave the supper and rush to the fields towards the open and they try to get wet, drenched in rain. Lencho, the farmer, is very happy that as per his prediction, the rain has come, big drops are falling and now slowly, slowly rain has picked up speed and now he can see his entire uh, field covered with sheets and sheets of rain because wind is also blowing along with it and he is very happy and he goes and tells his wife that this year we are going to get a good harvest because rain has arrived on time but very soon the winds change the speed change and the atmosphere grows quite cold and hail starts falling from the sky Hail's, hail is Many droplets of water, they combine and become a big droplet, a big drop of water. Many such drops combine and make a small ball of water. While falling down, 
because of the cold icy winds it instantly turns into ice and falls towards the earth with lots of velocity and hits the crop the trees lencho thinks that maybe 5 10 minutes but it will be over but the hail storm continuously goes on for 1 hour destroying whatever is visible in front of here there is not a single leaf on the trees none of his plant is standing his complete crop is destroyed all the plants are broken the stems are broken they are bent torn off and the flowers are gone that means he will not have a single corn level on the crop he won't have a single corn this year he is very much sad but he is the head of the family and he is very worried he stands in the middle of the field and he tells his sons that even a locust even the locust which attack in millions of numbers that whole of that group collect collection of locust that is insect which eat away anything green that is fun vegetation basically so it destroys the trees leaves and the crop altogether that is called a plague whole of that collection of locusts is called a plague of locust even a plague of locust would have left one or two plants and we could have few corn but this hail storm and the hail it has destroyed our fields completely and we won't have any corn this year we are going to go hungry yes but when he comes back at home when all the family members are filled with sorrow and they are sitting he realizes that he is the head of the family he is responsible yes he shouldn't make his family sad so he says that no one goes hungry yes it's a proverb that no one dies because of hunger the god creates such situation where we think it is total destruction and uh, we won't be living but he also creates opportunities he also adjusts somewhere so that people do not go hungry and they don't die of hunger so it is not known that people die of hunger something or other will be arranged and we will have to survive till the next season till our crop is ready and we have harvest so whole of the night he is having a sleepless night and he is very much worried in the morning he sits with a pen and paper though he is a farmer he still has a little bit of education he knows how to read and write and he sits down to write a letter write a letter to whom directly god that much faith he has yes he has been told he has been instructed all of us are instructed in our younger ages that we should fear god actually whole of the humanity we are god fearing people right we should we are god fearing people right we get fearful very easily and whenever we are in fear we rush to god so lancho also he has complete faith in god he knows that god is looking at me right now he knows my condition he understands the situation what i am thinking in my heart what i am feeling in my heart right now what i am thinking everything is known to him but then how do i know that he is going to help me i got to communicate in some way to him that i need money i need to survive for the complete year till the next season yes i need to survive and you help me so he starts writing a letter to god he wants to communicate to god that he is in trouble please help me though he knows that he god knows everything he is looking at me right now he understands the situation but then it is the duty of the human being to tell god so he doesn't find a way he is a very simpleton person he is quite a simple person plain person and he communicates with god he writes a letter so that is where we had reached now we continue with a next le- a lecture today's lecture he wrote after writing the complete letter what does he write in the letter he writes that this was the situation all of a sudden hail started hail storm started which continued for a complete hour it destroyed everything it destroyed the crop now i me and my family 
we need to survive for the complete year before the next season gives us a proper harvest for that he calculated on his own and he said i need 100 pesos so god please arrange 100 pesos for me send me 100 pesos that so that my family and i we can live till survive till the next season until the next season gives us harvest we need to live so for that survival he needs 100 pesos so he is demanding 100 pesos from god he has written the letter he folds that letter puts it in an envelope and what does he write he wrote to god on the envelope now it, we all know that god is omnipresent omniscient yes he, we can't see him but he is present everywhere in each and every molecule in each and every atom whether that's living non willing non living he is present everywhere right we do not have any permanent address or residential address of god lencho he is a farmer but he is not a fool he also knows that god does not have any address so he just addresses to god and the envelope is ready to be sent to god but of course he doesn't know the address so he doesn't write the address he simply wrote to god on the envelope he put the letter inside uh, in his drawer and still troubled he went to town now uh, okay letter inside that means in his pocket and still troubled he was still troubled because the situation is the same the situation has not changed Yes, and his thoughts worry him that I need money and unless God doesn't help me, how am I going to live? How is my family going to survive? So, he went to town. He put the, he read the letter, he wrote the letter, he put it in an envelope, he wrote to God on the top, he closed the envelope and put it inside his pocket and with lots of tension in his mind, he went to town. Now, town is going to have post office in the early days, we discussed earlier also, even today. Today, uh, each and every small town may have a litter box post office. They place a litter box over there and the people post over so that they ha don't have to go to the nearest town just to post a letter. The uh, postman comes regularly, say one or two days, whatever, right? He collects the post from the letter box and takes it to the nearest post office and sorts the letter out and sends to its destination. This is what happens. Now, in the earlier days, there were no po po post boxes in the smaller areas of the part and they had to come all the way to the post office to deal with it. So, at the post office, he goes to the nearest town. At the post office, he placed a stamp on the letter. Stamps you must have seen of all size and shape. No, it will either be uh, square or it will be a rectangular sometimes as special uh, stamps they do come in triangle also uh, they do not come in round or oval shape right so these are the usual shapes of the uh, stamp because they have to be affixed on the on the letter on the envelope right so uh, that is you pay for the services. What is the meaning of he placed a stamp on it? You have to go to the post office. You have to show the letter. If it's a common letter, usually if you talk in terms of rupee, then uh, 5 rupee is the minimum stamp that you affix. Nowadays, in the earlier time, you show the letter and say the postman or the employee sitting over, he looks at the address and tries to weigh the, weigh the letter. If it's heavy, then you have to put in uh, more money oh, it is simple letter just an envelope or uh, inland letter that is you can fold it stick it ah, you, that is one rupee two rupee whatever you have to take a stamp as instructed by the employee you have to buy it because you are buying the services of the post office the post office makes you pay for the service because now it is the job of the post office you have written a letter to Hyderabad it becomes the duty of the post office to reach that letter to destination Hyderabad not only that but to reach the letter to the address written on the top of it in Hyderabad city right so when the letter is delivered then the service is complete right so for that services they need to take money from you so you buy a 5 rupee stamp 
and uh, wherever Lencho was, uh, they counted in terms of pesos. So he might take a small denomination stamp. He has to buy it. So he bought the stamp and you have to affix it. Now the stamp, on the reverse side of the stamp, there will be a glue which can be made wet. It will be dry glue. But as soon as it comes in contact with a little bit moisture, it becomes sticky and you just paste it and usually you strike it with your palm, yes, and it is fixed, right? So that is the usual way. So stamp on the letter and drop it into the mailbox. Mailbox is that red colored, green color. Nowadays we have color codes. Otherwise, in the earlier days, it was just a red color letter box or a mailbox. You uh, drop that letter inside at the end of the day or the timings are set. The post office employee will come over there. Uh, the lower part of the mailbox will be locked. He, with the key, he will open up the uh, he will open the box and he will take out all the mail from it and again close the box or lock the box and take the mail inside the post office. Now it's the work of the sorting because one letter is for Ahmedabad, one letter is for America, another letter is for Bangalore, another letter is for Kolkata. So they have to sort out and then pack it separately and then dispatch it. Yes. So and dropped it into the mailbox. Now one of the employee who was postman and also helped at the post office. Now usually employees are there, there are postmen and other employees who stay in the post office. They don't go anywhere. They stay in the post office. Then there is another category of postman. What does a postman do? He takes all the posts given by the, all the letters, parcels, whatever he takes from the post office. And it is his duty. He has his own area to distribute. So he looks at the address, goes to that house and gives delivers the letter, parcel, money, whatever. So that is the postman. Other are employees who sit inside and do the work of the department inside the, for example, sorting out, right, uh, maintaining the ledgers, yes, uh, selling stamps, uh, doing the rest of the services, for, for example, um, taking the delivery of uh, parcels or uh, registered letters. So, and there are post office accounts also, financial department is also, so they are the employees who never leave the post office. But postmen are, they usually come and go, right? They take the mail and they help out to distribute. So one of the employee who was a postman, plus in small towns what happens, they don't have that many employees. So postman also works inside the office also. Postman also helped at the post office. That means he takes the post, he goes, he does the work himself and again, he takes the letters of his responsibility and goes and distributes in the town. But he works inside the office also. He went to his boss laughing heartily. Laughing heartily means laughing out loud. He went to his boss. He had a letter in his hand and he was laughing out loudly with lots of laughter. And he goes to his boss and showed him the letter to God. Which letter did he have in his hand? He had Lencho's letter in his hand and looking at the address, it gave him quite a laughter. It was addressed to God. Now, who has the address of God? But the letter has come to the post office. It is now the responsibility of the post office to deliver the letter to God. So, he is laughing for that reason that God does not have any residential address. He doesn't have any permanent address to which the letter can be delivered. And somebody is so foolish, he has written a letter to God. That is why he is laughing. Showed him the letter to God. Never in his career as a postman had he known that address. He was a post office employee, he was a postman for quite a long number of years and his, in his entire career as a postman, he never came upon any address, any name such as God without any address and as a postman he had known that address, he knew, he did not know that address. Yes, some, many times it happens that a letter comes to me, but because the postman knows me, and he has been delivering the letter to me, 
so somebody might not know my residential address full complete postal address it's called now wherever you live the flat or the things that we write in letter writing we write the flat number or the plot number then the name of the flat same way name of the plot with the name on top of it yes mr or mrs palana palana right then we write the plot number or flat number then the name of the flat or the name of the plot number then we write the area the first we write the street then we write the area road area road area and then the city with a pin code now if a person has been the postman has been delivering letters to me usually on a daily weekly basis he knows this person is there so somebody by mistake has forgotten my address postal address he just writes my name he writes the area perhaps he remembers and just the city name then also sometimes the letters reach me because postman their area of responsibility they show the letter to ha aapke area mein koi aisa hai ha so, somebody comes to ha this belongs to me because he knows recognizes the name of the person so in this way in his entire career he delivered letters door to door till today he had never known the address which is to god the postmaster now we come to the postmaster now who is the postmaster postmaster is the head of that office it is his responsibility the post office belongs to him he is the head of the post office over there so he is called the postmaster postmaster is the designation right it is the post right it's a post so postmaster he is the master that means he is the head of that post office so the postmaster now the author is describing him how is he he is a fat person yes he is a fat obese person quite healthy person amiable fellow amiable fellow is a person amiable means quite uh, loving he is very very kind in nature he is a loving person everybody loves him everybody he mixes with people he is a sociable pe- person yes he mixes very well with people he having a friendly character so amiable means friendly lovable he was a friendly and a lovable person when he re- took the envelope in his hand when he saw the letter is addressed to god he also broke out la- laughing broke out laughing all of a sudden he also starts laughing out loudly that is called broke out laughing broke out is a phrasal verb where verb plus preposition is there we will be learning about that phrasal verbs right so broke out laughing but almost immediately he is the person responsibility a postman can laugh at the uh, address looking at the address a postman can laugh because he is an employee of the lower category but he is the postmaster he is a responsible person whichever letter comes to him it is his responsibility to reach that letter to its destination right so all of a sudden he falls silent he was laughing loudly all of a sudden he stops laughing immediately he turned serious now he is becoming a little bit serious because a person has written a letter to god nobody writes a letter to god that means the person has so much faith in god that if he writes to god god will answer him so he didn't stop laughing he didn't become serious because he thought that this person is a fool but because he thought that the person had so much faith in god and tapping the letter on his desk he put the letter on his desk and with a finger he is tapping that letter on the desk and he is telling it to the employee who brought the letter plus post office mein sab nazdik nazdik baithte hain right so uh, it tells addresses to everybody what faith see the faith of the person who has written the letter he has started a correspondence with god he wants to communicate to god he doesn't know the address he is such a simple person he is such a innocent person that first thing is he has written a letter to god everybody knows 
you can't write a letter to God, right? Because the letter is not going to reach him. Because it doesn't have, God doesn't have a postal address. How is the post office going to deliver the address? Because they also don't have the address of God. But look at the faith the person has on God. So that's the meaning. What faith? Look at the level of faith this person is having. That if I read, write a letter to God, the letter will reach God. There are two types of faith over here. One is the person's faith on God and next faith is that person's faith on the post office, on the communication system. I don't know the address but my post office will deliver the letter. They will find out a way to make this letter reach. So two types of faith he says. What faith? I wish I had the faith of the man who wrote this letter. I am also a believer of God, but I don't have such a faith like the man has. Yes, the man has faith and he believes that the letter is going to reach God. I am also a very hard believer in God. Everybody believes in God. I am also a very steadfast, a very hard believer, true believer of God. But I will also not write a letter to God because I don't have the faith that my letter will reach God. That much blind faith, the person who has written this letter and dropped it into mailbox, that person has faith that my letter is surely going to reach God. Starting up a conversation or a correspondence. Correspondence, two-way communication, that's called correspondence. Starting up a correspondence with God. So, in order not to shake the writer's faith in God, the postmaster came up with an idea. Now, we see a trouble over here, right? The person who has written the letter has complete faith in God. Another thing, the, com the person who has written the letter has also complete faith on the post office. He is the head of the post office. He is also a believer in God. Now it becomes his duty to help out that man. The postman will be working in that city only, but the postmaster has been serving at many places and this is one of the transfer that he has got. He has been working in many cities, but in his entire career he never came up with a letter which was addressed to God without any address. So, to help out the person. How? If he doesn't deliver the letter, nobody is going to ask him, but then he is not truthful, he is not sincere, he is not honest with his work. He has to wait till that person again comes back after 10 days, 15 days, that I had sent a letter, I did not get a reply. Do you have any letter addressed to me or have you delivered my address? T he has to wait out till that time and then when that person again comes back, he has to tell him that God does not have any address and we cannot deliver this address. Then what will happen? The person will lose faith on God. Yes, God. He has heard so much about God. Whenever you are in trouble, God helps you. God comes to your rescue. He has been believing in God since he was a child. Today he had complete faith in God. And his faith will be shaken. So in order not to shake the writer's faith in God, postmaster comes up with an idea. Now what is that idea? Answer the letter. Now the person has written a letter to God. He is expecting a reply. So what will we do? We do not have the address of God. So how are we going to help him? There is only one option. You act as if you are God and reply to the 
or to the writer of this letter answer the letter but for that they should open the envelope and read the content so that they know what to reply but when he opened it it was evident evident sure that to answer it he needed something more than goodwill now what is goodwill goodwill is something good that you want to do you are willing to do something good so goodwill is a gesture actually an intention which wants to show that a person is trying to do something good that's a goodwill now his intentions were good pure he wanted that the person's faith in god should not be shaken so the only option is to take out the letter read it and give a reply but when he opened the letter and he read the letter something more than goodwill is also wanted we know what is written in that letter lencho is asking for 100 pesos it's quite a big amount because you have to survive for one complete year you need lots of money 100 pesos is quite a huge sum in those days right it was evident it was clear that to answer it he needed something more than goodwill not only goodwill he, to answer he needs two other things one is ink and one is pen uh, that is pen and paper he needs pen and paper and goodwill but apart from that if he replies he has to give money now the farmer has asked 100 pesos that is not even his salary put all the employees together won't even be that much salary on those days right so but he stuck to his resolution resolution something firm that you have made up your mind right that's called resolution yes every new year we make a resolution yes or no from 1st of january i will read 3 hours a day i will always obey my parents i will not shout at my parents you take a lots of resolution on 31st 1st of january you forget half of that starting with shouting at mother as soon as you get up from bed then one by one all the resolutions are the, what is resolution to make up your mind to do something carry out something that's called resolution but he had decided to help or to answer the letter so he stuck with that right i am going to do now how he has, how we will do it he asked for money from his employees now 100 pesos is quite a huge amount so he had to ask from his employees contribution or donation somebody will give 5 pesos some 2 pesos 3 pesos that way so he asked money from his employees he himself gave a part of it 100 that is beyond his reach so he gave a major chunk yes because he decided to reply it so he also put in lots of money from his salary several friends of his were obliged he spoke the same thing to lots of his friends yes that please donate to this charity somebody is in trouble he has written a letter to god and he wants 100 pesos how may, how much will you give so again friends also they might oblige oblige they might find it their moral duty because the friend has asked for help so they will oblige they will give but again somebody has given 2 peso 3 peso 5 peso so whatever he collected obliged to give something for the act of charity what is act of charity what is charity charity is something that you do for free without any financial benefits for example pop singers uh, film actors film actors they charge you money for doing some show but if the show is intended for poor people handicapped people old age people old uh, old people who live in the old age houses then they don't take charge money they do it for free that is charity when you want to do something for uh, so for some social purpose for some good intention you do it for free that is called charity so here everybody they will not get back their money they are giving away the money for something good so that is called act of charity it was impossible for him to gather together the 100 pesos even after putting 
lot of money from his salary, asking from his employees, asking from his friends, relatives, near and dears, all of them he was not able to put up 100 pesos. So we understand 100 pesos in those days must, must be quite a huge amount. So he was able to send the farmer only a little more than half. 100 peso, half is 50. He was only able to send little more than 50 percent. He put the money in the envelope and addressed it to Lancho because two is given. So from is also given over there, right? We have that on envelope, the front part should have two. That means address to the addressee. And on the reverse side or on some side of the front part, we should write from, right? So if the letter is not delivered, the post office, it will come back to the post office from where it got started. If the address is there, it can reach back safely and the person can know that this letter was not delivered, so it get, came back to me. So that way, Lencho's address is there. So he collected the money, he put the money in the envelope, so he was able to send the farmer only little more than half. He put the money in an envelope and addressed it to Lencho and with it, now he put the money in the envelope, but then he has to write a letter also. Reply should be there. Money is coming. Reply is not there. Right? So, Lencho should know that this money has come from God. So, he takes a small piece of paper, a letter, and on that he writes a single word, God. So, what will Lencho receive? Envelope. Inside the envelope, he will be having two things. One is the money, one is the letter. On the letter is written God. That means God, God has sent the money. So, containing only a single word, whole of the paper, he has written one single word, God. The following Sunday, Lencho came a bit earlier than usual. So, seven days. Again, because he is a farmer, he has got to work the clear the field because of the hail, the complete field is destroyed. He got to work over there also. Plus, he can come only on Sunday. So on Sunday he comes to town. He goes to the post office and inquires if there is a letter for him. It was the postman himself. The postman who brought the letter from the mailbox and handed it over to the post office. He asked the same person whether there is a letter for him. While the postmaster experiencing the content of a man. Now postman is outside near the counter postman uh, postmaster will be sitting somewhere in the center with a table so he, he was watching the conversation between lencho and the postman and he had a satisfied look yes this man has come he had written a letter to god and i have done my part whatever money i could gather i could gathered it honestly and put that money in the envelope wrote a single word God on it, wrote on the envelope Alancho's address. Now this person has come to collect his letter. He will open it and he will be happy that God has helped him. Now that faith will be will become more stronger in God. He will be a more firm believer in God because he had written a letter to God and God has answered him positively along with the money. Contentment, satisfaction, has performed a good deed. Now he had done a good deed. Yes, he has made a person happy, not with money. Money is not the concern over here. The faith is more important, faith on God. Yes, because of his deed, the man's faith on God is intact as it is. Lancho showed not the slightest surprise on seeing the money. Now Lancho asked for if there is any letter for him. So the postman takes that letter and gives it to him. Because the address, the postmaster had addressed it to Lencho, so postman gives him the envelope. Standing there, Lencho opens the envelope. He takes out the money. He is not surprised by the money because he had that much faith that if I ask God, God is going to help me with the money. So he is not surprised by the money. Yes, such was his confidence. He was so confident. He was a firm believer in God. He had trust and faith in God. And he knew if he asked for help, God is going to help. That was his confidence on God. 
सो वेन ही टेक्स आउट द मनी ही इज नॉट सरप्राइज हाँ मैंने मांगा था मुझे मिला वाई शुड आई बी सरप्राइज यस बट ही बिकेम एंग्री वेन ही काउंटेड द मनी वेन ही काउंटेड द मनी ही हैड आस फॉर हंड्रेड पैसोज ही गॉट लेस देन दैट because the postmaster we know he was not able to collect that 100 pesos so whatever he could he collected and put in now it was less than 100 to survive for the complete year he needs exactly 100 pesos now this is less so he became angry god again see the trust of this person on god god could not have made a mistake गॉड का एरिथमेटिक मैथमेटिक्स वीक नहीं है उसका काउंटिंग वीक नहीं है गॉड कैन नॉट मेक अ मिस्टेक इवन रीडिंग द अमाउंट ई डिड नॉट गॉड कैन नॉट मेक अ मिस्टेक बिकॉज गॉड इज अबव मिस्टेक यू कैन नॉट एक्सपेक्ट गॉड टू मेक अ मिस्टेक राइट सो ही हैड कंप्लीट फेथ इन गॉड दैट गॉड कैन नॉट मेक अ मिस्टेक इफ आई हैव रिटर्न हंड्रेड ही इज गोइंग टू सेंड मी हंड्रेड दैट वॉज द फेथ एंड कॉन्फिडेंस सो गॉड कुड नॉट हैव मेड अ मिस्टेक नोर कुड ही हैव डिनाइड लंच ऑफ वॉट ही हैड रिक्वेस्टेड ही वॉज अ सिंसियर फॉर्म बिलीवर इन गॉड ही ट्रस्टेड गॉड ही प्रे टू गॉड ऑल द राइटफुलनेस ही कंप्लीटली बिलीव इन गॉड so if he asked something for the first time god give me 100 pesos god is not going to deny what is 100 pesos for god god pure universe ka malik hai uske paas 100 peso nahi honge right so that lencho cannot believe that god will not have sufficient money to give him so two things he does not understand he could not understand that god can make a mistake second thing god will deny tumne 100 mange main 50 dunga no he is not going to bargain yes a believer has asked me i'll give it so he could not have denied lencho what he had asked immediately lencho went to the counter window it's called a window counter same thing to ask for paper and ink now he had come empty handed so he goes to the counter or the window and he asked for a pen and paper right on the public writing table usually people many times they have to uh, write immediately and send. so they don't go home or to that office there is a public writing table over there yes and people go and write their letter over there fold it put it in an envelope take the stamp stick on it and post it right over there so he borrows ink and paper from the counter on the public writing table he started to write with much wrinkling of his bro now he is angry but he is a farmer he doesn't know that many words and letters and he is not very good with that language he can speak very well but he has difficulty in writing right because basically he is a rural person uh, much good with farming but not good with letters so every time he has to think and whenever we think our brows the forehead wrinkles and our brows come to grad that is it much wrinkling of his brow the brows they get crooked when you think caused by the effort he had to make to express his thought he was very good at words inside but he did not how, how to put that properly on the paper when he finished he went to the window to buy a stamp now in order to take the services of the post office you need to buy a stamp so he buys a stamp from the post office he is still angry so instead of waiting somewhere on the wedding surface uh, soaked uh, some cloth sometimes yes you wet the stamp on it river side and then stick it he didn't even wait for it ah, this is an international habit of taking a stamp licking it you just need to get it wet your tongue is always wet so you just lick it it's not a good habit but then people do it it's a habit so he licked it he put that and he was so angry that he punched his fist on the stamp to stick it affix the envelope with a blow of his fist the moment the letter and then he goes outside and he drops the letter in the mailbox the moment the letter fell into the main box the postmaster went to open it the post office employee and the postmaster were very eager to know what type of answer he has he has taken the money 
he has read the letter and then again he has started another correspondence so the postmaster and the post uh, office employees they were they were very eager to know what lencho has written so they immediately postmaster himself he went outside took out the post and he goes back and all the post office employees he, they surround him he opens the letter and reads it to everybody now what is written this is the end of the chapter usually you will find the punch line in the last paragraph or sometimes usually in the last few sentences of the chapter it said god now it is addressed to god of the money that i asked of the money i asked you 100 pesos only 70 pesos reached me i asked you 100 i received only 70 so 30 are missing send me the rest he has this much faith in god that i asked 100 pesos god cannot make a mistake he will not in also deny and he is a very very simple person innocent person i asked for 100 you gave me 70 you still have to give me 30 because i demanded 100 only 70 pesos reach me send me the rest is demanding the rest of the money that is still due since i need it very much to go on for the complete year i need 100 pesos i got 70 barai mehrbani krupa mehrbani baki tis bhi bhej do but be careful don't send it to me through the mail i asked for 100 you must have sent 100 then how did i get 70 don't send it to me through the mail because the post office employees are a bunch of crooks this is the simplicity of the man this can be called the height of simplicity i asked a hundred you sent me a hundred but i received only 70 that means the post office people must have opened the envelope they must have seen money in it they must have taken out 30 pesos i received only 70. now i ask for 100 i get 70. where is that 30 that is not my concern but i am missing 30 you again send me 30. but this time not through the post office because if this time you send rest of the 30 again they are a bunch of crooks crooks they are thieves robbers a whole of the post office all the employees bunch the complete people working in the post office they are crooks they are thieves robbers they have stolen money what you had given me sent me they stole out of that also gave me 70 took away 30 so next time don't send me but not through post office now who is good who is bad we know the truth who is good and who is bad but the punch part is the last sentence. He has absolute faith in God. I asked 100, God has sent me 100. Out of that, post office people took 30. I am not responsible for that. I asked 100, I should get 100. You sh gave me 70. 30 is still outstanding please send it to me but this time don't send it through post office who is reading this the post office employees those who get that money for this charity work they are reading and they are called bunch of crooks by lunch so a very short sweet story with quite a beautiful ironic ending at the end where the people who did the charity work they are called bunch of crooks after honestly giving money in charity they are also they are labeled as thieves and crooks and robbers and the person is again asking for 30 remaining money right <laughs> remaining so what is going to be probable end this time also they will have to gather 30 pesos and give it to lancho so that the faith of Lancho on God remains intact. With this, we complete our today's lecture.
थैंक यू स्टूडेंट्स